travels around the world, from Antarctica to Tanzania, from Alaska to Australia, to assess the impact of global warming and to promote conservation. Environmentalist and lead scientist for the Nature Conservancy, M. Sanjin. I'm Maria Hinojosa. This is One on One. So the most surprising thing, kind of the most shocking thing that yeah. you've seen where it's just like, oh my God, I right. knew it was bad, but. Okay, so my most shocking story on this is that I went up to the Arctic and. Um, this I, was for the show on, on Alaska? Yeah, this was for a show that Discovery did on Alaska called Expedition Alaska. It's about climate in Alaska. But we, we, we met this guy and I spent a lot of time with him. Um, his name is Archie and Archie is a legendary uh, whale hunter. You know, they go out in, in, in kayaks and hand throw whales and, you know, into, with harpoons into, into big whales. He's 70 plus years old and he's of the highest status rank in this Nupiak Eskimo village. Um, very, very high status kind of guy. And one day he was with me in one of his cabins and he said, I want to show you something. And this never made it on the show actually. You know, we, mm. we, I followed him and he took me into an ice cellar. And an ice cellar is something that the Eskimos cut out of the permafrost, which is frozen earth, in order to store their meat. And it's very, very hard to build. You've got to chip it out of solid ground, right? Solid frozen ground. And inside, it's stacked with all the meat for his family and his extended family. Okay. So whale and walrus and goose and caribou and so on and so forth. And he said, this has been in my family all my life. And this guy's 70 plus years old. Oh, you old. mean like they build it once? Yeah, they build it, it once. And it stays. It's, exactly. It's like the it's frigid like the, air, the permanent frigid air made out of ice. Exactly. And, and it, it's hard to build these things. And it goes, you know, generation after generation will wow. use the okay. same cellar. And he said, you know what? Last year, for the first time in my memory, it thawed out. And I <gasps> lost, you know, a third of my meat for the winter, which is a big deal for those guys. Of course. And he said, guess what's happening now? And he took me to the corner, and this was sort of in September, and sure enough, there's a puddle of water dripping from the wall. And wow. so we emerge out of this, and I was shaken by it, and I said, what are you gonna do? And he pointed out, and outside his house, he's got a GE <gasps> refrigerator, freezer sitting there, waiting to be plugged in. Oh my God! And I thought, yeah, you know, this old <laughs> thing about we're gonna sell you know, freezers to the Eskimos is really coming true. So once you meet a guy like that who's showing you something that's happening in his life, and he's an old guy, so he knows the patterns of nature, it's hard to be dispassionate about it. You know that you are part of the problem, and thus you also have to be part of the solution.